Sanjay, it's David. Um, there was bipartisan support for this deal, but there was also bipartisan opposition. <laughs> Bernie Sanders saying the question we should be asking is, should American taxpayers provide the microchip industry with a blank check of over $76 billion when these companies are making tens of billions in profits? Rick Scott, the opposite side of the aisle for sure from Mr. Sanders, says multi-billion dollar corporations like Intel will have access to Americans' hard-earned tax dollars to build manufacturing plants and get tax write-offs with virtually no strings attached and still be able to operate and expand their business in communist China. I'd love you to respond to both of those criticisms. So what I would like to mention here is that, look, chips and science legislation that President Biden is going to be signing in less than an hour here is really leveling the playing field. Over the last couple of decades, foreign countries, particularly in Asia, have invested hundreds of billions of dollars in providing incentives to bring semiconductor manufacturing to their shores. And this is what has resulted in 37% manufacturing of semiconductors at the turn of the century to now being only 12% of total semiconductor manufacturing here in the U.S. This is what we have to reverse. We have to diversify global supply chains. We have to build a resilient supply chain here in the U.S. and have domestic production. This is important for national security in critical military and other critical infrastructure, you want those chips produced here. In order to produce them here, you have to have a level playing field, and this is what this legislation with the support is going to provide to the companies to bring manufacturing to the U.S. to make it competitive with foreign production. Foreign production right. today, particularly in Asia, is 35 to 45 percent cheaper today. And these, and uh, uh, other important thing I want to point out is that the semiconductor companies like Micron are actually going to be investing a lot more than their profits in leading edge R&D and CapEx that is required to bring this production to the U.S. A vast majority okay, Sanjay, of the investments, yes, vast majority uh, of investments Sanjay, will be made I understand by that. Micron. And longer term, that's terrific, but uh, you cut your cap, capital expenditures by, uh, by my measure. Uh, more than $893 million today. You also said that you're probably not going to be able to make your very, very low uh, projections that cause your stock to go down substantially. Uh, so I, I'm trying to understand both the short and long term because your short term, uh, your short term update on business conditions, frankly, is, is extremely subpar, Sanjay. So, Jamie, you are correct. This is about managing the business adeptly in the near term and for the long term as well. And the investments we have just talked about are really for 2025 and beyond time frame because the growing demand will be met, will require us to build additional wafer capacity here in the U.S. In the near term, certainly, we are seeing due to macroeconomic headwinds, as well as, you know, in certain market segments, customers not being able to secure constraint components, non-memory components, that's impacting inventory adjustments, which have broadened since we last spoke. Uh, instead of just being inventory adjustments on the consumer side, we are seeing some inventory adjustments occurring on the data center side and also some adjustments in automotive and industrial. And this is what is impacting our outlook here. But what's important is that these inventory adjustments will take care, will manage through the system, bringing down inventories at the customers and bringing down inventories at the suppliers. And sometime in the next year, in, uh, demand and supply will get in balance. And what's important is that we are taking actions to cut our yeah. capex now in order to reduce the supply growth and use right. the inventory to supply next year's demand. But Sanjay, that's what you said when that, you announced the list. Exactly. I'm Sam, not going with it. Sanjay, you, Sanjay, said, Sanjay, the I'm same, not buying you said the same thing when no, last I, I, time yeah. you were with us. I completely I'm, appreciate you coming on, but Sanjay, you did say that this, what you did last time was going to help eliminate the quad. So things must be much worse than I think. Yes, certainly over the course of last one month, we have seen broadening of the inventory adjustments, and these have broadened to other parts of the markets, at, as I just noted. But of course, again, Micron has taken further actions in order to cut the supply growth, bringing down our capex for next year. And again, I think what's important is that the long-term trends of AI, of 5G, of autonomous, of cloud, absolutely are intact. Those are secular demand drivers. We have to, when you look at the long-term picture, we need to get right. through the near-term speed right. bump, bring inventories in line, and then the industry health will be restored.
Okay, uh, let's take it as long-term, good, short-term, Sanjay, murky. I'm choosing murky, but I thank you for coming on the show.